So hello geometry students, happy Friday. Let's get this lesson on the way. So this is gonna be a review, okay? So what I'm doing here is what I'm going over, what the sheet you can download or do on, your, on a piece of loose leaf paper is a review for the quiz. Every question, type of question you see here will be in the quiz in the same order, using the same formulas. I just changed the numbers and the shapes. Everything else, this is going to be a triangle. This number two is going to be a parallelogram. No difference. I'm also putting up an area reference sheet. That area reference sheet is going to look something like this with all of them. And they are also in the number of the quizzes. So if, you, if number one will be right there, number two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so they're not even, you have to look them up. You know, for number one, the first one is the area of a triangle. So we need that. So we'll go through this, okay, as we're doing it. So how I want this done, how I want you to practice for today is do this and send it in to me. It'll be like a study session. You'll have everything you want. I'm going to leave up this video on Monday when I post the quiz. So when I post the quiz on Monday, you will also see this video there for reference. Think of it as like me reading the instructions to you in class. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started. Okay, calculator definitely needed for this one. Uh, you need a scientific calculator. There's one question, of course, the area of a triangle using trig or trigonometry. You need to use sine, uh, but we'll get to that when we need it. So a regular calculator is fine up until that question, which is question one, two, three, four, five. Question five, you'll need a scientific calculator for that one. Okay, so otherwise I think you should be fine with just a regular standard calculator for most of these questions. Okay, so first thing, area of the following triangle. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. Now the important thing to remember is the height is how tall the triangle is. In my case, I picked a particularly tricky one because the height, how you measure height, is outside of this triangle. So it's the distance from the top of the triangle to the base, and it makes a 90 degree angle. So if you can imagine, it was like sitting on a tabletop, right? Here's a tabletop, right? And it was a hard triangle, you know, something like a piece of plastic. And you'd measure the height. You take a ruler and you'd measure it right there. That's the height. So my height here is three feet. Okay, so one half parentheses. That's going to be my base. We'll talk about that in a second. And my height is three. Now, don't be thrown off by this. They put a number here. This is really, really nasty and tricky. Why do you, you don't even need this information. Why would someone put this information is beyond me. The base is just the distance from here to here. Now if you want to review review area of a triangle, remember there's some tricky ones where the sometimes the height is inside the triangle. On a right triangle, it's on the triangle. And sometimes it's outside the triangle, like this nasty example I'm giving. But I just have to find a side. Two. Now we have to remember everything is in feet here. I'm just putting it how I put it in my calculator first. So here we go. Try to get this here. So I'm going to clear this out. And I'm just going to do this. That's it. So the area of this triangle is three. This is in feet squared. Three feet squared. Now, other ways to do it, uh, if I was on a calculator, maybe that wasn't so easy to put one half in, I might do three times two divided by two. Three times two is six. Six divided by two is three. Just a little tip there. You don't have to use it if you're using parentheses. Yeah, I gave myself another tricky one. So I'm giving myself the tricky ones. Hopefully, you don't get the tricky ones here. So now, Area of a parallelogram is just like the area of a rectangle, which is a parallelogram, base times height. Now this one is particularly tricky because this dotted line here represents the height. Now usually height, I am thinking up and down, but for some reason, they put the height here. Okay, well that's okay. 
Because if I'm looking at this, I know parallelograms have two congruent sides, like rectangles. So this is 4.7, so this is 4.7. So very careful to think here. Is the height is always perpendicular, it means it makes a 90 degree angle with the base. So you gotta determine what your base is. My base is this. This is equal to this. Tricky. Six in this problem means nothing, not a zilch, zero. The only information I want to know is the base and the height. Now if I walk, if there was a height over here for this, if something was like that, another height over here, that could be okay. Then, then you could use six, but you can't use it here. So very simply, base, in my case is 4.7. And my height is 5.7. The rest I'm going to let the calculator do the work. So I'm going to say 4.7 times 5.7 is 26.79. This is in inches. Inches. Those are the first two. Okay, so let me move on to questions three and four. Remember, you can pause this, you can uh, go back, use that to your advantage. All right, next one. Two more, okay. Probably well, I mean, a bunch more. But. Area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is not one most of us have in our minds normally. Area of a trapezoid, I look at my thing, I find it here. It is area equals one half height b1 plus b2. Let's just define what these are. Height is the distance between the two bases. Now the bases are the two parallel lines. See how these two are parallel? This is base one or base two. You can mix them up, it doesn't matter. These are your two bases. You can call this base one, you can call that base one, it doesn't matter. One's base one, one's base two. The height is this. It's the distance between the two of them. It makes a right angle with both of them. And that's your height. So this one so happens that the trapezoid, it's right on the outside, which is good. It makes it easier on us. But don't get confused. If this was just a side and another trapezoid, it might not be the answer. You've got to remember it's the distance between the two bases. Once I do that, though, Height is 6. B1, I'm going to call the top one just because people use to put the thing on top first. 4 plus 10. I'm going to do that first, right? I'm going to bother putting it in the calculator. Area equals 1 half. 6. 4 plus 10 is 14. Easy enough. Now I'm going to put that in the rest of the information in the calculator. I'm done working hard. I'm going to let the calculator do most of the work now. 1 half. Sorry, this is a little fuzzy trying to get around this light that's on my thing here. I need it, otherwise you can't see anything. But sometimes it's too bright as well. Sorry if it's fuzzy, but I mean, all I'm doing is putting this information in. And my answer is 42. So A equals 42 meters, M's. Square. Now, moving on. The kite. All right, so look up area of a kite. Okay, it'll be right there for you. You can print it out, you can copy it yourself, you can leave it open on your desktop. Area equals one half d1 times d2. Now, d is a diagonal. Now, a diagonal, I'm going to take a different color here. Let's fix them up. Blue and uh, purple and I don't want to use orange. Purple and green. Okay, I'll use a different color shade of green. Now, a diagonal goes from one corner to the other. That's one diagonal. 
in a kite. Another diagonal in this kite goes from here to here. Now, what they do here is tricky. Where this one going, the little one, they have an arrow, they have an arrow. That means this length is 10, and this length is 10. 10 plus 10, 20. So I'm going to call my D1, my first diagonal, 20 meters. Now this second diagonal, the purple one, they have arrows pointing it to it, so we have to be careful. So that means this little part here is 10, and this little part here is 20. 10 plus 20 is 30. Now, which one of these two you want to make D1 and D2 doesn't really matter. But once you get that, this is all you have to do now. I should have put meters here. Right. Okay. Now this is what you have to do. Area equals one half 20 for D1 and 30 for D2. Now, if you know 20 times 30 is 600 and half of that is 300, but for those of us who don't, let's just do it this way. Okay, so again, divided by one half, one divided by two, 20, 30, hit enter, the answer is 300. So our answer, final answer, is 300 meters squared. All right, for that. I know this is going to be long, but you're going to be so prepared, you're going, no one's going to mess up. Okay, the last two regular problems on the quiz. I'm going to go over one of the bonuses, but I'm not going to go over both of them. I'm going to go over these, okay? So, here we go. Area of a fo the following triangle. I'm going to try to focus this a little, see if it comes a little bit better. Okay, a little bit better. All right. So, area of the following triangle. Now, here's the problem. I don't have a base. I don't have a, well, maybe, I guess 12 could be a base. I don't really have a height. I have to figure out how to do this. If you were, uh, you could maybe figure out a height if you use certain ideas with trig. You know, like I would think, oh, well, height would probably be like this if I turned it upside down. And then I have a right triangle with 33 degrees here, 5.5 feet here. You could definitely use uh, opposite over hypotenuse. You could use sine. 33, there's a formula. Let's just go with the formula, okay? Because then once you found the height, then you still had to do one half base times so height. I'm gonna say, let's do this instead. I'm giving you the formula. Area equals one half BC sine of A. A being the angle. So this is gonna be my angle A. Across from angle A is side A. Well, then I could call this point over here angle B, right? And over across here is side B. That means over here I can have angle C, and that means this one is side C. Across from angle C is side C. Across from angle B is side B. Across from angle A is side A. So let's plug these all in. Because essentially that's all we had to do. Now, one half B is that one side. So this B and C are the two sides. This other side is five and a half. I'm going to put it in its decimal form, 5.5. .5. And then finally, I'm going to do sine of A. Big A is meant to, they should put a little arrow there, is 33 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. Very, very important. Now let me grab my calculator. I'm going to put in this thing. I'm going to check, make sure I'm in degrees, which is good. Okay, so second quit. Okay, so one divided by two. Uh, one divided by two. 
12 is on one side. It's my A. I'm going to be my B. My C, I said, was 5.5. And my sine, 33. I'm going to close two parentheses there. That looks like a lot, but the calculator can handle this. If you want to, you could do the first half of the equation. Now you can multiply 1 half, 12, and 5.5, and then just maybe multiply that by sine of 33. If this is too long for you to do in one shot, I'll show that too. So I'll hit this, and I get this number, 17.97. Let's use a different number. There it equals 17.97, and this is in feet, so it'd be feet squared. Now, this is fine. We're, we're, we don't have to do any more, but I, I, as I said, you could do it this way. Another way I might do it would be 1 divided by 2 times 12 times 5.5, and that'll give me 33. So then I could have done 33 sine of 33. So that's really, that's kind of funny. And now you would see, I would just get the same answer. Okay, just another way to do it on the calculator if you get a little confused with too many numbers putting it at one time. Okay, next one. Ratios of area and perimeters. I'm not even having you solve the perimeters for these. We could, but we're not. Uh, the following parallelograms. If they're not parallelograms, they look like squares. I'm going to assume they're squares. Uh, but I'm just going to keep this basic. Okay. It says area and perimeter of similar figures. If scale is A equal over B, the ratio of the perimeters is A over B. And the ratio of the areas is a squared over b squared. So let's first you find the scale. Well, that's easy. I just take these two numbers, 2 over 4, which I can reduce that fraction to 1 over 2. Now, I could flip it over. I could put the 4 on top and the 2 on the bottom. That's okay, too. You don't have to worry, just as long as you keep it consistent. I have decided that I'm going to put the little one on top. So for every one of these next things I'm going to do, the little one always has to be on top. If I did the big one on top, everyone would have to have the big one on top of the fraction. So, so the ratio of perimeters is exactly A over B. It's the same exact thing. 1 over 2. Now the ratio of areas the ratio of areas is a squared over b squared. Well my a squared is the number on top. 1, I'm going to square it. And my number on the bottom, my b is the number on the bottom. It's going to be 2. I'm going to square it. 1 squared is just 1, 2 squared is 4. So that's the ratio of the areas. So you have the ratio of the areas, the ratio of the perimeters, and the scale. That's all. I'm not asking you to solve it, I'm just asking you to know the ratios. And that's in our thing. Okay, so in our, in our reference sheet, the area reference sheet I'm posting. One more, one more, I'm gonna go over one bonus. I never go over bonuses. Okay, so if you want to impress me, this is it. Okay, so the area of a regular polygon, one-half A times B. Okay, so A is the apothem. That's the distance from here to here. Remember, the distance from the middle to the middle of one side. Okay, so that's 14.4. Okay, we already got that figured it out. Now, the side lengths. All right. Well, perimeter is equal to the number of sides 
times the side length. Well, one side in this triangle, the distance from between two angles, this straight line, is 13.9. So leave that blank. The number of sides, well, that's easy. I'm going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Septagon. 7. Now I'm just going to do 7 times 13.9 to figure out seven times thirteen point nine will give me the perimeter. Then what do I do next? I plug everything into this formula. Area equals one half. A, we already determined is 14.4. Perimeter, we already figured out, is 97.3. Let's see. Let's see what the magic calculator tells us. Again, parentheses, 1 divided by 2. 14.4. 97.3. I get this number, 700.56. So the area equals 700.56. Uh, it should be, they don't, for some reason, they don't give any uh, units on this question. I didn't realize when, so I'm going to pretend it's uh, inches, right? So these were inches. So this would be then inches squared. Remember your units. Okay. You guys are good. Okay. Uh, remember, you, I'm going to post this video also with the quiz. I'm going to post the uh, area reference sheet tomorrow, well, today when you open this up. And on Monday with the quiz. So this will still be here. So that means as you're taking the quiz, you can be watching this video. As you're taking the quiz, you can be open, have this open on your screen and be checking for the correct formulas. I don't know how much more of a take-home quiz I can make this. Okay, so I wish everyone the best of luck. I hope you have a great weekend. Study with this, okay? But I think everything should be pretty relatively easy. And just make sure you're prepared for the quiz and think about how it's going to be set up. All I did was change the numbers and the shapes. I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend.